Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. But welcome this morning. Uh, it's great to have you this morning. I heard a little story about a uh, little Johnny walking into a pet store. And he's walking into his pet store. He sees this beautiful, beautiful parrot. And so he's walking by the parrot, and the, little, and the parrot uh, squawked at him. He goes, hey, little Johnny. And little Johnny looks at me, smiles, you know, waves at him and stuff. And so he keeps on walking. He goes, hey, little Johnny, you're ugly. And little Johnny gets all hurt. He's a little kid. He gets his, hurt, his feelings hurt. So he goes to the owner. He goes ahead and he tells him what the, the, the parrot did. And so the owner goes back and grabs that parrot out of the cage and he puts him down. He goes, don't you ever talk to little Johnny like that again. You do that one more time and you call him ugly, I'm going to wring your neck. I'm going to pluck your feathers out. Do you understand me? And the, 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 the parrot was freaking out. He's traumatized. Poor parrot. He's got trauma. But he behaves. So the next several days, he's doing okay. He, he, didn't, he wouldn't talk and smack anymore. Next Saturday comes, little Johnny goes into the pet store again. He finds himself, and sure enough, in the distance, he sees the parrot. And he looks, and he just puts his head down because he didn't want to have any kind of confrontation with the parrot. And the parrot also sees little Johnny, and he looks, and he puts his head down because he just got in trouble last time little Johnny was in that store. So little Johnny's going by, and he goes right by the parrot, and the parrot whispers, Hey, little Johnny. He goes, What do you want, you mean parrot? What do you want? Hey, little Johnny, you know. You know, <laughs> in life, listen, we all have our own little parrot with that voice, that screeching, ugly, constant, demeaning voice that uh, says a thousand times, Marcus, you know, you know, you'll know you're not enough. You know, you'll never amount to anything. You, you know, who are you to... To, to, to try to help others when you're all messed up yourself. Anybody ever hear voices like that? You know, uh, you're, you're a fraud. What would people think if you told them? You don't know how to love. You're unlovable. She's going to leave you. You can't even love yourself. Over and over again, that voice that we hear is called the voice of shame. And the voice of shame always is connected and tied to your past. And that's what we're looking at here in this particular series. This is our third talk in the series. We're talking about big perspective, how to keep your, your, your future, your past, and your present uh, in proper perspective in light of God's big eternal plan. So we looked at the future. We looked at the present. And today we're going to take a look at the, the, the past. How do we deal uh, with the shame of our past, the stuff that took place in the past that many of us have regrets about. Some of us have bought into certain mindsets that God just needs to just uproot some of those things. So we're, we're going to look at some of those things. That, that's the stuff that I contended with the most when I was growing up because I had some false doctrine. I had some, some bad thinking, stinking thinking. And, and, and he started showing me what he thought about my past according to his word. And so I'm going to take a look at that this morning and hopefully get some freedom out of this place. But listen, the voice of shame, also, there's another voice out there. It's called the voice of grace. Two totally different things. Let me, let me uh, describe them. Shame always says you're not enough. Shame always has a gravitational pull downward. When, when the Spirit of God speaks and the Spirit of grace speaks, it lifts you up. It edifies. It builds you up. It strengthens you. It makes you aware of what you're going through and what, you're, what you have to face and contend with, but it's always for the purpose of growth and health and strength in your faith. And so shame always says you're messed up. You'll, now you'll never recover. But grace says you made a mistake. It doesn't define you though. There's always room for growth and healing. Shame says hide those flaws. Don't let anybody know. If people knew, they'd reject you. Grace says, hey, you're safe to be vulnerable. You're safe to be authentic. It leads to connection and freedom. Shame has this other voice that says, man, you're a failure. But grace says you might be a failure, but you're human. That's why Christ came. Your worth isn't tied to your successes or failures. Shame says, you'll never be good enough for God or anyone else. But grace says, God's love for you is unconditional. Nothing that you do or others do will ever be able to separate you from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. It elevates you. It strengthens you. The hard thing is to fight to stay in faith that that is actually true. Because it's been, we've been bombarded by this, the shame voice, the voice of shame. But God wants to turn things around. Now, instead of going through uh, how you deal with the shame, I think I have one of the greatest resources on how to work through your personal shame. And it comes in the form of a book that Pastor Joel wrote uh, a few years ago, but it's called Fully You. It's the green book. 
Just ask him, hey, Pastor Joel, give me the green book. Pastor said I can have one, okay? I'll buy it. Well, I'll make him buy it, whatever. But, but just get one because that, that right there, see, we have a doctor friend of ours, uh, one of the most just amazing, amazing therapists in, in, in the Bahamas, and he goes to Washington. We, I met him a few years ago, and he helped me process this stuff. He has an amazing concept on how to deal with the shame. He's a wonderful book, but he's very highly intellectual. So when Joel met him, he, he got the concept, and then he broke it down into layman's terms. That's why this book was written. And this book has helped hundreds and hundreds of people. It's helped me as I coach other men and other individuals because it really gets to the root cause. Remember I told you last week that you're, you're a product not only of nature, you're not only a product of nurture, but you're a product of the God picture that's inside of you. What you think about God, if you think if you make him real small, that's who God is for you. Well, the enemy's always trying to distort the true picture of who God is. He's going to reframe it. He's going to distort it. He's going to, you know, make it look in waters and pastels. And God wants acrylic, beautiful, bright image of who my father is. He wants to reveal those things and get you and uproot your, your life from the shame of the past. See, most of us have, are more sin conscious and more, you know, past conscious than we are righteous conscious or God conscious where it propels us to go forward. He wants to uproot that stuff on the inside of you to give you a good, solid foundation in life. Many of us live out of a false self. We just cover up. We cover up the, the issues that really God wants to uproot and that's thinking, thinking, but we, 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 we choose to live in a false self. We put on a, a mask, just like Adam and Eve did in the very beginning. They, they hid themselves. They sewn fig leaves around them to cover their shame. Shame, when Brene Brown was doing a study on it, they described, they asked people, describe in one word what the word shame feels like. And, and most of the words that came out, the highest, the highest one, the highest common word was, I feel naked. I feel naked. That's what shame does. Makes you feel naked. Makes you feel like you, you have to cover up. You have to hide. You have to cover up and, you know, the shame that you're dealing with. Most women deal with their, 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 their cover up you know, externally. They do shopping. They do shoes, they do makeup, they do suction cups, they do all kind, I don't know what the reductions and tucking here and tucking there. It's, it's usually external, seriously. And the, the, the ladies were laughing in the first service. I see some of you guys smiling because you get it. But shame for men, most of the time they deal with their shame internally through silence and secrets. And that's how we, we contend, you know, to, to, to work through these things. And we just find ourselves in a cycle, repeating it over and over again. But God, by his spirit, he wants to uproot that crazy belief system and destroy it. Every single person who was born on this earth right now, even and back then has three. God created us with three basic needs, the need for connection. We need to be feel loved. We need to feel connected. God connected with Adam and Eve every single day. He connected with them. He had a relationship with them. The other thing that they, man needs is something that's called autonomy. In other words, they need to be empowered to make decisions on their own. And that's exactly what he did to Adam and Eve. He goes, he gave them, the, I created all this for you. Now build your kingdom. Name the animals. So he gave them the choice to make the, the choices. That's a giraffe. That's a dog. That's a monkey. And notice that God never said, that's not a monkey or that's not a giraffe. That's dumb. He didn't humiliate him. He gave them the power and, to make decisions. And they lived with those decisions. If some of you guys have grown up where things were real strict by your parents or you went to a school that was real strict and you, were, you, 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 you voiced your opinion and someone overrode that opinion. It's like, that's stupid. You can't think that way. It's not right. So next thing you know, you were humiliated. And a lot of people, when they contend with humiliation, they do one of two things. Either never try again or they, they, be, they become an OCD kind of a person. They're perfectionists. And the way they'll overcome the humiliation, the potential humiliation, that they make sure that they do everything right and present themselves right so they'll never be humiliated again. Make sense? That's Pastor Joel. He talks about that. That's his side of the triangle. My side is the, is the side of connection. Even though mom and dad, they were, born, they were married 60-some years. They loved me. They cared for me. They were always there to provide for me. The way I was looking for affection or love from my father he didn't give it to me that way. He still was there, an amazing man. He, he's the most stable man I've ever met on the face of this earth. Even, like, seriously, he's my hero, steadfast. But I always wanted to hear, son, I'm proud of you. Son, I'm this. I didn't hear that until I was, like, 40-something years old. 
And so, so I was discontent inside. And it wasn't that he did anything. It's the lie I believed because I wasn't receiving that. And so, so rather than connection, I felt rejection, even though he's never, ever rejected. We've talked about this in the past. And so, but that's how I interpreted everything. So I had this major source of rejection. So I had to fill that connection void. And so I found things that I would never reject me. Drugs never rejected me. If I would get it, it always delivered. Oh, yeah, that's my connection. Pornography. We, we use exercising. Uh, there's, all, there's so many addictive patterns on this earth. If you find yourself you know, in an addic- addictive cycle, usually, nine out of ten times, if you go back, you'll see that you're looking for acceptance. Ephesians, the first chapter, says, because of what Jesus did, we are accepted in the beloved. We're not rejected from him. We're accepted from him. That blew me away when God said, man, you're looking for acceptance in other people and even your own father. My validation comes, your validation comes from me. You are accepted because of what I did through Christ. And it just set me free. The other need that people need is security and safety. They need to feel secure. And God gave that to Adam and Eve. This is a place I provided for you, a home. It's a safe place. You can always come to this place. This is a, this is a sanctuary for you. If you grew up where you were, you know, the people that you really loved, all of a sudden they were taken away from you or they went from one place to the next, one place to the next. Guess what? That safe place turns into abandonment. It's like, man, that, where is dad? Where is, God will never do that to us. He, he's always there with us. But our, our fathers or our parents, because of stuff that's happened, sometimes we feel abandoning issues. And we deal, I'll, I have to live on my own. I have to, it's a, I'm a survivor. I've got to maintain this cause myself. And everything else is kind of dangerous, so they take up on that mantle. And if they're not careful, they, be, they can become narcissistic, where they're just consumed with their life and, and, the, and, and themselves. Anyways, grab that book. I don't have to teach it to you because he's got an incredible way to work through that process. The main thing is identify your pain point because then you'll see it and you're able to address it as you go and move forward. So that's, that, that's dealing with your past. I love it. But, but there are some things that the Lord taught me in the beginning regarding uh, the, the, my past that he had to immediately take care of. And so I found myself in his word, and he was just shattering some of those things. So let me take, take a look at a couple of them real quick. What does God's word say about keeping a perspective regarding your past? One is this. Uh, it, your past doesn't define you. I know that's a simple concept. Your past doesn't define you. In other words, 2 Corinthians says, if, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. All things have become new. Even though we receive Christ, many of us still see ourselves the way we used to do things instead of listening or we're looking at the work that Jesus did on our behalf. And so, so, so all of a sudden we have to go in there and re- recognize, wait a minute, God's given me a fresh start. He's not holding the stuff in the past against me. He's given me a fresh start right now. It's almost like if I was to describe, what, how does he see you? Well, I remember going into my firstborn was, uh, Natty was having my firstborn, and I, I wanted to go see and, and visit my child. So I went to the hospital where they have the babies and stuff, and the nurse had this baby. And Natty had just finished having Aaron, and she's coming over to the window, and, and I'm tapping on it, and she's showing me this baby. And it was just smiling, it was beautiful and stuff, and I'm like, that's not my baby. That's, that's my baby. He goes, no, this is your baby. It's like, no. She's got blonde hair and blue eyes. I'm, I'm a Mexican. I got this is a black hair baby with a mustache right there. That's mine. Because <laughs> no, it's not. I was like, well, I guess this is my baby. I don't know. So, so what I, you know, what I, what I, Aaron had blonde hair and blue eyes. My mom had always prayed for a light complected, and we're German, like full German in the background. So many of our uh, grandparents and stuff are just totally real light complected and got real light hair and stuff. So that's where Aaron, it's like, Mom, you messed things up for me. She's not a Mexican. She's a white person. No, nothing that mattered. <laughs> anyway, it was, just, it was just interesting. And so, so but, but whenever I looked at that child, the first word that came to my mind was innocent. This child has no past, has, there's no shame. And, and when God looks at us, when we receive Christ, all things are passed away, all things have become new. He looks at you as if though you are innocent, fresh. And that's mind-blowing. 
when I got that concept, it was like, wait a minute, I don't understand. All the stuff that I've done, you're just wiping it? Yeah, that's the second thing he taught me, that all of our past mistakes have been wiped away, have been erased. Notice what it says, I even I am he who has blots out your transgressions. And I, for, my, for my own sake, and now remember your sins no more. As far as east is from the west, so far have I removed all your transgressions from me. I love that about God because I would hold on to the stuff. Felt bad about the stuff that I had done because we've hurt people and unintentionally and people have died and people have gone to jail. And all the stuff that we were doing was really impacting people's lives. So you felt a real heaviness. But the Lord showed me that all that's been taken care of because of what my son has done. No, not only is my past erased, not only is it forgiven and it doesn't define me, but last thing, my past is a teacher. So it's look, look to your past. You're going to see that I've been there all along and some of the things that I was trying to teach you. Notice what it says in Romans. It says everything that was written in the past was written to teach us. Well, everything you experienced in the past was written, is there to help you understand, to teach us. To help you understand how God is involved in every aspect of your lives. So that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. It says all things work together for good to those who love him or pursuing him. To those who, who you know, are called according to his purpose. God will never waste any of your pain regardless of what it is. Everything he can use, he'll get all those fragments and use it for, your, for his glory. Eventually, if you just pay attention and, 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 and listen to what some of the lessons that he has taught you along the way. Is it painful? Sometimes, but it's okay. It's, it's going to make you stronger. Your past is a teacher. But the greatest one that I, I, I learned or I found out in Scripture was the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul, I mean, talk about his past. He had... He should have been hanging his head down because he was a murderer. He was killing people. And then all of a sudden, he begins preaching. He becomes a Christ follower. And the very people, maybe some of the cousins or of, of individuals that he had slain, now he had to go preach to them. So he had to overcome these things. But the Apostle Paul, um, his perspective on how to approach your past is so awesome right here in this passage. He goes, no, dear brothers, I'm still not all that I should be. I'm bringing all of my energies to bear on this one thing. I forget my past, but I look forward to what lies ahead. I strain to reach the end of the race and receive the prize for which God is calling me. Where? Upward. Upward. So when I looked at that last week, I'm like, wait a minute, God... Uh, uses Paul as my mentor, someone who has dealt, could have dealt with shame and all kinds of stuff to instruct me on how to approach my life and regarding my past. And so when I looked at it, I said, oh, I see him. He says, go inward, go onward, go forward. And when you land, always land upward. And so I want to look at that this morning here real quick. He goes, no, dear brothers, you have to go inward, Paul said. No, dear brothers, I'm still not all that I should be. Don't ever be satisfied. You're one year old in the Lord. You're 50 years old in the Lord. Don't ever be satisfied. There's still more to learn about him. There's, it's a, there's a, just a mass of revelation in just simple scriptures. And all of a sudden, it just breathes strength and peace into your soul. And all of a sudden, he reveals himself in another way. I'm like, it is so beautiful. It's an adventure in him. Jesus said in Matthew 11, chapter, come to me, all who are weary. You're heavy laden. You're tired of the way that you're living. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. I'm not harsh. I'm not close-fisted. I'm not a heavy-handed guy. He goes, my yoke is easy. My yoke, it's light. You'll find rest for your souls. You're looking for rest in your soul? Come to him. Learn from him. Look at the scriptures. Look at what Jesus has done. How Jesus connected with people in the scriptures is, is, a, is a revelation of how my father thinks about those type of people. When the lepers, the religious people of that day, they're like, don't touch him. He's full of, you know, it's sin, it's a curse. Well, Jesus said, no, that's not who my father is. My father goes down and he touches the leper and heals them and restores them. And that's, it's all of a sudden, you, this never stops in life. You keep, you keep processing, you keep moving forward, you keep advancing, you keep growing. How long until you die? <laughs> I mean, seriously, it's just like, it's just like Hunger Games, Hunger Games, the movie, I love it. It's kind of gross or whatever. It's kind of, you know, crazy. But uh, it's, the enemy comes in like that. At any moment, he, he's a thief. He, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And so you have to be ready at all times because he's trying to put you under. But Jesus wants us to go over 
And he's already made us triumph in Christ Jesus. We've got to hold fast to his word. So he says, go inward. Go inward. Socrates says it this way. You've got to examine your life, though, if you want to go inward. Socrates says, the unexamined life, it's not worth living. He goes on to say, not only go inward, but go onward. In other words, there's a tenacity. There's a persistence. There's something that helps you just you get all your energy to advance. He says, I'm bringing all of my energies to bear on this one thing. In other words, Paul, Paul said, whatever I face, whatever comes my way, I'm not going to look at it in a negative light. I'm going to look at it as an opportunity for me to grow. And so that's one of the things that he told me this last year. The Spirit of God said, Marcus, everything that comes your way this, week, this year, look at it as a gift. And how you respond is your gift back to me. Respond with wisdom. So, man, it's just, it's been challenging this, this year. But it's been beautiful, though, uh, because I have to keep going onward. You can, never, you can never stop. You can never quit. Game on. This is happening in my life. It's not a setback. It could potentially be a setback. No, it's a comeback. I'm moving forward in his name. You feel like you're getting buried. But just remember that when we did the dirt series, all growth takes place in the dark. All growth takes place in the dirt. So, so, so whenever you're in the dirt, you know, it, it, sometimes it feels overwhelming. Everything's dark. Everything's moist. And every, you see no light. And you feel like you're being buried. And all this stuff's happening. That's exa- but that's the, the, the one place that God will use in that dirty, dark, ugly place that that's where growth takes place. When, when, when God plants a seed, he puts it in the dirt. And, 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 and when that, that seed is inside, it, it doesn't grow fruit. It doesn't bear fruit until the outer casing of that seed has to break. When the outer casing is broken, then the DNA, the blueprint of that original seed, then it goes up through the ground and it sees light. And there's growth and there's beautiful things in the future. And so even though you might feel like you're being buried, you're actually reframed. You're being planted by the Spirit of God if you just stay steadfast and move and, and allow his work to work inside of you deeper. So not only that, go, go onward now. Go forward. He goes, go forward. He goes, forget the past and look forward to what lies ahead. You can never get to your destination if you're driving a car if all you're doing is looking at the rearview mirror. You won't get to San Antonio if all you're doing is looking at Austin. So sometimes we live our lives that way. We're constantly reflecting on what was. I wish it would change. I wish it would be different. Mary Magdalene, the one that first came, Jesus first came to, she saw him right there, but she didn't recognize him because she wanted what was. A lot of times we want what was. Well, that's not going to happen. He wants to reveal something new to you. He goes, those former things are gone. I'm, behold, I'm doing a new thing. And just look and listen and pay attention because I want you to go with me. But so many times we're feeding the wrong thing in our hearts on a day-to-day basis. Watchman Nee says this way, the Christian life is like two dogs fighting on the inside of you. Well, which one wins? The one you feed the most. Don't feed your past. Starve your past. Starve those things that, you know, bring you down. You know, starve it. Kill it. Feed your future. Next week, Pastor Joel is going to come back and finish this series, and he's going to talk about how you can feed your future and just have, by, by having gratitude. Gratitude is the key and, and the proper perspective to keep the big picture right in front of you. He'll coach us on some of those things, so I can't wait for that. But go onward, go inward, go forward, but whenever you land, wherever you're at, always land upward. In other words, keep your sights up high. He's called us upward. Notice what he says. I strain to reach the end of the race and receive the prize for which God is calling me upward. Over and over and over scripture. You cannot quit. We got to see ourselves getting back up. It says that the righteous will fall seven times, but will rise back up. I, even I am he who will uphold you with my righteous right hand. You might go down, but you're not going to stay down if if you're with him and he's with you. And so you just got to keep pressing on. There's so many scriptures that talk about how to elevate your sights to a higher place. Go back to your seat, like I said last week. That's where you're at. That's where you live from. You're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Notice what he says. Keep your mind on things above, not on earthly things. 
Let us run with endurance the race that's before us, looking unto Jesus. He's the author and perfecter of our faith. Notice what he says in, in Matthew, the sixth chapter. Don't store up for yourselves treasures on this earth, but look towards heaven, the things that, that, that are in heaven uh, where nobody can destroy. Those are the things that mean the most. It says you will keep in perfect peace. Him whose mind is stayed upon him because you're putting your trust in him. In other words, your sights are up here. This is your source of, 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 of love and affection. It's, 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 it's him that's above. He's in that place. Keep pursuing him. In Romans 8, chapter 6, those who live according to the flesh will set their mind on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit will set their minds on the things of the spirit. The, the person who's governed by the flesh will, will, will reap it. But the person who's, who's governed by the Spirit, there's life and there's peace. There's life and there's peace. Last week when we were in Guatemala, um, we got, happened to go down to see um, about 150 students. These were teenagers. And they were, it was an incredible place. Uh, I, I just couldn't understand. I mean, we saw a bunch of poverty, orphans. I mean, just all kinds of stuff. But this, these students, we were hanging out with them in their gym. And it was just a different, a different culture in that whole environment. It was still Guatemala. It was poor. Some of them didn't have the same shoes, no socks. I mean, it was just, it was, but they, had, they didn't know that. I mean, they were the most peaceful, the most joyful kids I have met. And I'm thinking, it's like, man, what, what is it? What is it about this place? I said something just different. Then I met the man who was running the place. He's a 70-something-year-old um, a veteran, a Marine. Just looked sharp, little Hispanic guy. He says, man, God ruined my life a few years ago. After I retired, he told me to come over here and, and talk to the kids. And this man, I don't know who he is. I even forgot his name. But he was the most genuine, humble, full of God's presence man. Walked humbly, but walked in confidence and authority. It's just, it's like, that's what it is. That's the difference here. All, all I'm seeing is a reflection of this man right here. They were just watching him, mimicking him copying him as he's living out his life in Christ his light was so bright that you couldn't you couldn't help but just be drawn to the light and find out what is going on in this man it's so beautiful and that's exactly what God wants to do in our lives and when we were in that place we got to share I didn't even know I was going to preach but they said hey Marcus come share it's like oh okay um, so I talked about three knots in a devil's tail and uh, I'm not going to go through that but one of the one of the things that we talked about was we talked about the story of Bubba. Bubba uh, is, is the donkey. And so we talked about this donkey. This farmer had this donkey, and his name was Bubba. And he, has, he had ridden with him all, all this time for a long time. He helped him with the farm, and he's been a pet, you know, and he's good. But now he's getting old. He's getting a little, you know, sidetracked. He's, getting, he's, he's stumbling here and there. He gets into carrots, places that he shouldn't be getting into. Uh, but he's been around for a while. Well, the next morning, we hear... Uh, the donkey neighing, or whatever the donkey does. Yeah, he oh, he oh, he oh. He's just, you can hear all around the farm. He goes, man, where in the world is Bubba? What's going on? I hear him in the distance. So as they, they trace the sound uh, uh, echoes, they, 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 they realize that, oh, man, Bubba fell in the well. It's a dried up well, and he falls in there. And there, sure enough, Bubba's okay. He might be a little injured, but he's looking up. Master, he oh, he oh, he oh. Get me out, he oh. And so the, the, the master sitting there is like, man, what, what am I going to do? He goes, I, I, can't, I can't lift him up. I don't have anything big to pick him up. And so I don't know what to do. The rope's not big enough. Even if it was long enough, I, I can't get him up. And you know what? He's getting old. And, and really, he's, he's causing kind of some stuff around the, around the ranch. And, and I got to actually bury this well or just cover this well because I don't want my kids or anyone else to get hurt. So I'm going to have to go ahead and, and bury Bubba. And so he gets this dirt, and he puts it right there. And next thing you know, he starts putting the dirt in there. And Bubba's sitting there waiting for his master to get him out of that place. Next thing you know, he sees dirt falling on him. He's like, man, what is going on? He's getting all discouraged. And so because we, we're looking for a rope or a tractor or something, and dirt just keeps falling. And he just keeps shaking it. He goes, man, he, I'm, I'm, this is it. This is the end of my life. I'm done. E haw, e haw, e haw. Bubba goes, I mean, the, the farmer goes, and he empties all the dirt pile. He's not looking anymore. He hears him. E -haw, e -haw. Next thing you know, he finishes the dirt. 
And right when he looks up at the well, sure enough, Bubba's still alive, and he actually just jumps right out of the well and starts walking into his freedom. He's like, what the heck just happened? Well, every time the dirt was falling on Bubba, he would just shake it off and just step up. He'd shake it off. He'd be concerned, but he'd just shake it off, and he'd just step back up. And that's exactly what you and I need to do. If we want to land upward, we're going to have to take the stuff that happens in our lives. We're going to have to learn how to shake it off and take another step up. Because we will not allow anything that comes our way, regardless, hell or high water, to prevent us from pursuing the will of God and become more more like Christ. So we can reflect the character and nature of our Heavenly Father in this city. We're going to make it hard for people to go to hell in Seguin, Texas. Well, we can't do it by ourselves. We have to do it as we yield ourselves to the Spirit of God and allow the light to shine through us so that the people can see that there is love, there is hope in a dark world. Amen? That's what you and I need to do. In closing, you can just take a picture. You just got some some quotes that you might want to take a look at. Your past is a place of reference. It's not a place of residence. Yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. Today is a gift. That's why it's called the present. I love that. There's another one. You can't start the next chapter of your life if all you're doing is rereading the last one. Don't be a prisoner to your past. Don't be a prisoner. Shake it off. Take a step up. Be all that God's called you to be. Amen? Amen. Father, you're so good to us. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the, 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 the emboldened uh, life, Lord God, that you give us to press on through. Sometimes we feel like giving up. We've been wrecked, we've been hurt, we've been betrayed, all kinds of stuff's happened, and we're just like, man, what else is going to take place? But Lord, it's in that space that you do miracles. It's in the middle of the dark places. When the children of Israel uh, were surrounded by water and Red Sea and Pharaoh, they had to look up, because that's where our salvation, that's where our strength comes up. So Lord, we thank you that you empower us to look up regardless of what we face. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody that agreed with that said, amen. If you are ever in the Seguin area, come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m. Or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and blessings.